In this video, I will show you how you can run PostgreSQL on Visual Studio Code. And if you want to master Visual Studio Code or PostgreSQL, then I am planning to create courses on Visual Studio Code as well as PostgreSQL. So what you have to do is, you just have to subscribe to our channel so that once the videos are published, you will get further notification. So without wasting much time, let's get started. Alright, I will share multiple ways using which you can install or you can set up your PostgreSQL in VS Code. So watch the video till end so that you do not face any issues. So let's start. Alright, so the very first step is to download PostgreSQL database. So in your favorite browser, in my case I have Google Chrome, just type download PostgreSQL and the link you get is www.postgresql.org. This is the official website. And you just come here and based on your operating system, you can download the installer file. In my case, I have Windows. I'll just click on this Windows button. It will lead to this particular place. And I'll just click on this download the installer. And it will lead to an external website that is enterprisedb.com because they are maintaining this. So at this moment, while recording this video, the PostgreSQL version is 14.2. So based on my operating system, so in case of Windows, you can click here. If you have Mac, you can download from here. In case you have Linux, then you can consider clicking on this particular link. So let's click on this particular link so that I'll download the installer file for Windows. So the file is downloaded. I'll just click on this executable file. Click on next. You have to select the installation directory. I'm not going to change this. So you can see that it is going to settle in program files, PostgreSQL and the version at this moment is 14. I'll check all these. So by default, all these options are checked and I'll just click on this next. Again, I'll just click on next and you can give the password. So this is the password using which you will connect to your PostgreSQL. So do not miss it. So I'll just give a password, simple password and I'll just click on next. You remember that for PostgreSQL, the port is 5432. In few of the rare scenarios, it will be 5433. So I'll just click on next. And you see here, it is giving lot of options for locale. I'm not going to change this and I'll keep the default locale. Click on next. And again, I'll just click on this next button and it is ready to install. Now you can see that it is finished. This option should be checked and this is stack builder and I want this. Click on finish. And now you see that it says which is the server you want to connect. So in my case I have PostgreSQL 14. I'll just click on this. I mean I'll just select this. And if you want to connect to a remote server, you can have this particular option. But in that case, you should be having all the details of that particular remote server. In my case, we will be installing this on our local machine. That is the reason we will select the second option. Click on next and it is going to download these options. And actually these all options are not required. So what you can do is you can just cancel it. Okay. And I'll just click on this. Yes. All right. Now what I'll do is I'll just go to this particular option that is start and I'll just come down and I should be having P right. You see here under P, I have PostgreSQL and these two tools are very important under this. First one is pgadmin4 using which you can connect to database and you can write the SQL commands and you can perform lot of SQL operations. The other one is SQL cell. So if I just click on this SQL cell, using this SQL cell also I can connect to my PostgreSQL database. You see here, it says server as localhost. I'm not going to change it. Please remember it is localhost. Database is Postgres. Please remember, I'm not going to change it at this moment. Port is 5432. So I'm not going to change it. Username is Postgres. Please remember, I'm not going to change this at this moment. And password, you can give your own. And please remember this password using which you will connect to your database. So I'll just give here a simple password. Please remember this. And now what I'm going to do is, you see here it says type help for help. Now just type help. And you see that it gives few options. For example, backslash h is for all the SQL commands. 
backslash question mark is for all the piece SQL commands and so on. So let's say that if I just give backslash edge, you see that all these options are related to my database. All right. If I just give Q, Q is for coming back or escape. So if I just give Q, you see that I have just come back and what I can do is, for example, I can just give backslash L to check the current databases. Now you see, I have three databases at this moment. And if you want, you can create your own database. For example, I can just give here create database and I can give name of a database, for example, dev and then semicolon at end. Give enter and just wait for some time so that it creates a database for you. Now you see that this particular create database has worked and it has created one database. If I just give backslash L, you see that now I have four rows and this is the database which is created. So I just wanted to show you something about PSQL and let's say that if I just close this and I just forgot to tell you, okay, I'll just show you again. Uh, if I just go to PSQL again, so let me just open this. If I just go to P, uh, I'll just come here and you see, you can have a shortcut for this as well, but I'm not going to create any shortcut at this moment. Click on this, give enter database. This time I'll just give dev because I want to connect to dev database only. Give enter port is fine. Username is also fine. Password. I'll give my password. Now you see that I have connected to this particular database. So at this moment, I do not have any record or I, I do not have any tables in this particular database. Now, I just wanted to show you that you can connect to your own database only using SQL cell. Now let's close this. Okay. Now I'll just show you another option using PG admin. I should be having PG admin. So under PostgreSQL, you see, I have PG admin four and you can connect the database using this PG admin four as well. So it is asking to set a master password. I'll give a particular password. And now you see here, I have these servers. If you just click on the servers, I have PostgreSQL 14 and I'll just give password. So this is the password which you have to give to connect to PostgreSQL server. And I ask you to remember this password. Just give OK. And you can see that you have a lot of details in this particular tool. So this is a very good tool. And in fact, I'm going to have a particular course on PostgreSQL where I'll be using this particular tool. So if you want to check that particular course, you can check the description of this video and you might get the link by the time you'll see this video. All right. And if I just go to this databases, if I just click on this databases, you see, I have two databases at this moment. One is Postgres and one is dev. So you see there is a question mark here because I have not connected to this. If I just click on this particular database, so you see that it says, please connect to the selected server to view the dashboard. So at this moment, there are no tables. So I'll just close this, but this is the default database that is Postgres. And if I just click on this, if I just go to schemas, you see, I have this public and under this public, if I just come down, I have tables. If I just click on this particular table and now you see that I have query tool, I have PSQL tool, I have reference button and I can create a table, right? So at this moment for this particular database under tables, again, we don't have a table. So if you want, you can create a table itself. So just give right click and you can click on create table and you can create a table using this. But this video is not about PG admin four. Rather, we will be using the visual studio code to connect to PostgreSQL database and we will be creating our table or in fact, we can create databases and we can perform a lot of other operations. I mean, SQL operations using visual studio code. So first I'll just close this again. I'm going to close this and what I'll do is first I should be having visual studio code. So I'm sure that you guys are having visual studio code. If you do not have it, go to this link that is code.visualstudio.com and you can download the Visual Studio code based on your operating system. For Windows, you can download from here. For Mac, you can see that the stable version is here and for Linux, you can download from here. All right. If you want to install a fresh installation of Visual Studio code, make sure that 
normally you check all these four options i always suggest this okay let me just close this and just open your visual studio code and what you can do is first the very important step is that go to extensions and i'll tell you to install one extension so if i just search for post gray sql you see the first one okay so this is a very good extension and this is from chris Kolkman. please note that there is another extension that is this post gray sql extension from microsoft do not install it and this is not a very good extension in fact you can install the previous one from chris Kolkman. just click on install button and i'll show you how easy it is to connect to PostgreSQL using this extension. I always suggest that whenever you install an extension, you should reload your Visual Studio code. So I'll just give Shift, Control and P to open the command palette. And here I'll just give developer reload window so that my Visual Studio code is refreshed automatically. Now you see that my extension is installed and I'll just click on this Explorer button and you see here I have post SQL Explorer. You see this elephant icon. Just click on this and you see at top you have Postgres SQL Explorer. Just click on this plus button and you can give the host name. So by default it is 127.0.0.1 or you can just give localhost. Localhost and you can give the name of the user. If you remember the name of the user was Postgres. So I'll just give Postgres, give enter. You can give the password using which you have to connect the PostgreSQL database. I'll just give my password and you should have remembered this password. And 5432 is the port and it gives two options. You want to connect using secure connection. So do you have a server for which you have a secure connection or for localhost, it is always suggested you go for standard connection so if I just click on this standard connection, now you see that it says show all databases or Postgres or dev. So if you remember, we create this dev database using SQL cell. So that is the reason it is showing this particular database as well. If you do not create that database, it will only show Postgres. So I'll just click on this show all databases. And now what is the display name or label you want to keep? So I'll just give, for example, localhost post gray sql db give enter so this is just a display name you can give your own name so you see the same display name is coming here i'll just click on this arrow and i have two databases the first one is dev and the other one is postgres so first i'll just show you how to connect to postgres now you see that if i just click on this and at this moment i think i don't have now first let me just create a table so this is the default database that is Postgres. What I'll do is I'll create tables on our database which we created. So you see this is the database which we created that is dev. So you just give right click and you say new query and you can create a table. So I can just give for example create table and name of the table. So I'll just give for example let's say I want to create a table for employees. So I'll just say EMP. So this is for employee table and I'll just say for example employee ID and I'll just give for example integer. Okay, I'll just give integer and now let's say I'll just have employee name. So employee name I'll just give for example text field or it is better I'll just give where care of let's say 50 and Again, I'll be having, for example, employee address and I'll just give a text field so that I should not be worried about the length and attend, I'll just give a semicolon and you see, I'll just give right click and I'll just give run query. You can give F5 in keyboard. So once I run this, you see it says null rows created. That means the table is created, but there are no records. Now I'll just comment it out. First, let me insert few records in the table. So I'll just give insert into this particular table that is EMP and I'll just give EMP ID comma EMP name comma EMP address 
and I'll just give values. So I'll just give for employee ID, for example, one. For employee name, I'll just give, for example, Sandy. And for this particular employee address, I'll just give a dummy address. Okay. And now, if I just run this, so I'll just give F5. And it says Sandy does not exist. So there is a problem. So, okay. Let me do one thing. I'll just give in single quote actually. Sorry for that. And here I should be giving in single quote. And if I just give F5, you see it says one rows created. Again, I'll just give here two. And I'll just give, for example, let's say Mandy. And I'll just give dummy street two. And again, I'll run it. So again, it will create another record. Now I'll just comment it out. And if I just give select star from name of the table, which is EMP. Now, if I just run this, you see, I have two records that is employee ID, employee name and employee address. And it is showing employee ID one to Sandy Mandy. And then it is showing the corresponding address. Now, if I just come here in the div, you see, if I just refresh it, you see, in the public, I should be having a table, you see, in EMP. And if you just give right click, you can just select top 1000 records or some top records. For example, if I just want to select top 1000 records, I, I'll just give here, I'll just select on this and it will give me top 1000 records. Since we have only two records, that is the reason it is displaying only two records. So this is how you can create tables. In fact, you can perform all the operations, for example, alter, you have drop, you have delete. So all the SQL statements you can perform using this Visual Studio code. And you do not have to connect to PG admin or SQL cell. And in fact, you can create your own database here itself. So I'll just give right click. And you see here, it says you can edit this connection, you can rename it, you can have new query. So if I just give new query, I can create my own database. So I can just give here create database this time i'll just give the name of the database as prod okay and i'll just give here database and if i just give f5 or run query you see it says waiting for query to complete it will take some time because it is creating a database which involves a lot of indexes clusters and so on so that is the reason it is going to take some time now it says null rows created now you see here if i just refresh it now, you see, I have dev and prod. Again, if you just come here, you can have a new query and you can create tables here. Now, if for some reason, this particular extension is not working for you, I'll tell you another extension, which is extremely good. So go to extension manager. Again, give post gray SQL. And you have this particular extension that is post gray SQL from S-W-E-I-Z-A-N. So this is an awesome extension which I have myself tested it out and it behaves in a very perfect manner. I'll just click on this install button. Now it is installed. I'll just go to command palette and I'll reload the window again so that whatever extension I'm uploading or I'm adding, it should behave in a proper way. All right. And now you see that once you install this extension, it is going to create two particular icons. So here it is database explorer and at the bottom it is other explorer. So the database explorer, I'll just explain first. And you see, first let me just come to this particular option that is explorer. Click on this database explorer and you see here, you can connect to GitHub as well and you can refresh and there are other options which I'm not gonna talk. Just click on this plus so that you can add your own connection. So if I just give plus, First, let me just close the previous one. It is not required. And now this is also not required. This is also not required. Okay. Now you see, if I just click on this plus button, I'm getting this option that is connect to database server. The beauty of this extension is that it is supporting different, different databases. For example, MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQL Server, SQLite, MongoDB, and so on. 
Since this video is all about PostgreSQL, I'll just click on this PostgreSQL and host name either I can just give 127.0.0.1 which corresponds to localhost. If you remember port was 5432, username was Postgres, you have to give the password using which you have to connect to PostgreSQL. So I'll just give my password and if you remember I told you to remember this password and I'll just click on this connect option. You see databases and all you don't have to change because I'm going to connect to Postgres. If you want to connect to different database, you can give that particular database name here. Okay, just click on connect now. And now we see that I have these three databases. Now in the same way, you can perform all the operations here. So for example, let's say that I was into dev and I was into this particular public, right? And we created this table that is EMP. Now you see, if I just give right click, you see there are lot of options here. Now you can drop the table, you can generate the mock data, you can add a column using alter command and so on. And you see, if I just click here, you see this has given me the details of this particular table. I mean, how many records this particular table contains. So this is a very clean interface. And if the previous extension is not working for you, you can install this extension and it will behave in a very good manner. So that's it. In this video, I hope you enjoyed this video and I have given multiple ways of running PostgreSQL commands. For example, you can run it using SQL cell, you can run it using pgAdmin and in fact, the best way is that you can connect with Visual Studio Code itself if you are a VS Code lover and you can install either one of the extensions and you can work in a very proper way without any issues with PostgreSQL. So that's all. If you like the video or the video was helpful, please hit on the like button and if you want to watch the complete tutorial on PostgreSQL, do subscribe to our channel so that once I publish that video, you'll get the notification. And that's it. Keep on practicing. I'll meet you in our next video. Till then, take care. Bye. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side